Okay guys, here's another quick video to add to the one I'm doing, trying to help everybody with this nose strut upgrade for the flight line uh, 1600 millimeter F7 F Tiger Cat, because I've got them on here. There's no problem with the mains whatsoever, but the nose, we're going to run into a problem, as I stated earlier, and I'm uploading another quick and dirty video right now, is, is the strut doesn't go into the wheel well like the stock one does, and the gear doors actually clam down right here on the wheel uh, quite a bit. Um, I've gone ahead and taken apart my, taken back apart my, the strut, so I'll show you what I'm doing. You have to take out the screws, there's three screws, there's a screw back here, two little screws on either, either side of these collars, and this screw right here, which is a stop screw, and also connects to the spring. So, take this apart, there's actually a, two pieces here, they're stuck together with paint. See if I can get them to pry apart here, they won't. Yeah, this collar right here, because I painted my struts white. So, get it down here. You can see that the piston has got a shallow part into it. I'll come down in here, and that stopper. And you can see this second stopper right here, which I machined and put on there to decrease the travel distance. That travel distance is controlled by this screw. Put it back up on here, kind of show you what I'm talking about here. The problem that we're having, and those of you who have a machine shop can do this, is not really an easy fix. But when the when you get the struts, they sit like this, and compared to the stock strut, the, the nose gear sits further forward with its travel, which is why it's sitting high in the nose wheel well right here, and the doors aren't closing on it. What we have to do by putting that little spacer I just shown you on there and decreasing that travel is I'm decreasing, the, I'm actually causing the compression strut and this screw which would normally sit against the, the that side of that stopper is now having to force it further down because I have a second stopper in it which is forcing it further back that also notice as you'll notice that also forces the wheel to sit back further and down it's actually more in line with the stock strut because these when you put them on actually sit a little further up and a little further forward than the original stock gear does and it doesn't take much it's about an eighth of an inch approximately I'll show you the little piece I use but you'll have to find something close to it uh, because I got these at work on top of that I have put two shim washers underneath the front of the retract strut here to angle it back a little bit mine will actually retract without um, having these washers underneath of it but it's real close it's very close so I went ahead and put two extra Fix my spring here. Uh, put two extra washers on here, which also angles the strut backwards, so in its retracted state, forces it down deeper into the well. You'll notice I have also stretched the spring a little bit here from its original configuration, so that it so that there's a little it, it sits a little deeper when the strut engages it, which it does, it engages it right about there where my fingers at, and pulls it close. That actually was causing it to bind on the door as well. So the combination between this, this, and that piston, which is the big problem when they made these, they've got a design flaw. They need to, if they can fix that, that would be great. That piston just needs to be actually machined a little higher on the shaft. Get these off here. Needs to be, needs this piston bottom stopper right here needs to be up where I have this second one right here, and actually probably about another sixteenth of an inch higher which will limit this travel. That distance right there is the travel I have now, whereas it's pulled before, and that's causing, that allows the nose gear to sit further back. And it's controlled by that screw right there that rides in this hollow area of the shaft. Now it stops right there instead of down here. So I hope that helps explain to everybody what I was kind of holding off on doing for a while. I've been waiting to talk to Alpha about this privately but I haven't heard from him yet so that they could get this fixed before it kind of got out in the public and um, everybody got latched onto these but he hadn't called me yet but he's been busy overseas right now with the new A10 now then another problem you may run into is the nose gear door is going to hang up right here and if you'll notice I have a piece of plywood that I have put right here to act as, as a runner so that when this retracts back, it slides off of it, and it doesn't catch right here 
when this is folded down and the gear is coming up and down. So I've added a little spacer on there uh, when this comes down and it doesn't catch this lip right here and snag and I was having a little bit of popping on that right there. But that's all you need to do and that's how I've done my fix. So to recap here, I've stretched the spring a little bit. That's a trial and error you'll have to play around with. I actually had it overstretched the first time and uh, had to replace it. I have already bought in spare springs. Uh, I put the strut in, which is a drop-in. I shimmed a little piece of extra metal spacer there to limit that piston travel movement. And that's the biggest mod right there. And I've added some additional washers under the front here to help angle the strut back. I wanted to keep the forward rake of the strut. These are what I've used. Let me see if I can get one of them out here while I get one of these out here while I'm talking on the phone trying to make this video. There we go. That is the little part that I used. It's a standoff, an electronic standoff. Yep, where to go here? That's an electronic standoff. I took my Dremel tool and I cut it in half. Get this guy out here where we can work with him. I cut a little slot in it, cut it in half, bent it open. I pinched it around that shaft, and then I put just a drop of CA to hold it in place. And then I had to file it down smooth to fit inside the piston right here. So it took a little while for me to emery cloth that so that it so that it wouldn't interfere and would actually travel. Uh, I'd have smooth travel movement right there. I polished the shaft because they're a little gritty and grimy. And once I got the shaft polished and some extra lubrication and grease in here, they were actually pretty smooth. I did the same thing to the mains as well. And then that set screw right there is now being stopped by the other one that I have on the piston right there inside there. And you do have to actually push this strut down when you tighten up this screw so that you don't tighten up the screw on the shaft. Um, on a side note, I noticed this screw is a little too long right here so I actually filed it down if you tighten this down all the way even with the spring on it it will actually pinch against the shaft and takes away the oily movement it doesn't take much just to draw a file it a couple times or run it on a grinder real quick and take about a you know a couple thousandths off the end of it there so that when you tighten it all the way down because it does retain this spring it won't lock the shaft down as well so, anyway, there's where we go. I went ahead and took this apart. I'm uploading a quick and dirty video, but I didn't go into this lengthy of an explanation. And I thought I'd go ahead and take this thing apart and show you exactly mechanically what I did. Most of you have got machine shops and are ways to do this. I did this all in my garage with a Dremel tool. But there it is again. There's the little part that I put on there. 